Story time of the most dirtiest college roommate ever. By the way, we're calling her Jessie. So I moved in before Jessie and I get settled and decorate. The next day, she comes and throws her bag on the bed, then leaves. I thought it was weird because she didn't even say anything to me. Couple hours later, she comes back and I'm like, uh, hello. And she's like, my bed and comes give me a hug. She smelled very bad. She starts unpacking all of her clothes and blankets, but they smell like mildew. Anyways, a week later, there's this party going on for freshmen, and she goes, but I stay in because I had a migraine. I told her that when she comes back, can she keep the light off? Now it's 2 a.m., and she comes back in very loud, uses the bathroom, then goes to sleep. And now I'm up, so I got up to use the bathroom too. When I sit down on the toilet, I feel something very squishy. It was dark because, like I said, I had a migraine. I get up, turn the light on, and I was sitting in her shit. This story time is from a follower, and she wants advice. By the way, we're calling her Dana. So Dana has a best friend, and we're calling her Trinity. They have been best friends since first grade, and they plan to do everything together, including going to the same school. So right now, they're in 12th grade, and they wanted to go to the same college, but Trinity hasn't been doing well in school. Dana tried to help her, but she wasn't doing so great at tutoring. Trinity was failing her math class, but three months later, it seemed as though Trinity grades were coming up. She noticed Trinity getting good grades, but without knowing the actual work. One day, Dana had lost her phone and used Trinity's phone to call her phone to find it. Out of nowhere, she get a text saying, hey baby, and Dana's confused because Trinity never told her she was talking to anyone, and they tell each other everything. She jokingly went through the messages to see what they were talking about, and come to find out, she was talking to her math teacher. She thinks it's weird because their math teacher is almost 40, but she don't know what to say to Trinity to get her to stop. Y'all come in. Here's a story time on how my toxic ex-best friend got me arrested. And she's the reason why I'm banned from the only mall in our city. So in high school, I was friends with this girl, Destiny, and she was the type of friend I felt like I had to walk eggshells around. She was very cocky, but she was a thief. She always tried to get me to steal from a couple stores, but she said I was always too punk to do it. Just one day, she asked if I wanted to go to the mall with her, and I was like, yes, because I wasn't doing anything. We also ended up going to a clothing store. She asked me if I was tired of carrying my boot bag. I was like, yeah, little. And she said that she would hold it for me so my back wouldn't hurt, and I thought it was very nice of her. We ended up separating for like three minutes in the store, and she tells me she can't find anything. She hands me back my bag because she said her shoulders were starting to hurt, and of course, I took the bag back. When we walked out of the store, we started beeping. I was confused on why because we never got anything. The workers asked us to see our bags, and when they opened up my bag, there was a $500 jacket stuffed in my book bag. This is part three of how I found out my boyfriend lied about his age. At the time, I was 15, and I found out he was 32. Okay, so like I said before, I saw his ID and I could tell he was lying about how it was fake. So I immediately wanted to get out. I try to open up the door, but it doesn't open. I told him to let me out. He responds, you're not going anywhere and you're not leaving me. I then start pushing on him to get me out. He stops and says, if you keep pushing on me, we're going to crash. So I grab my phone and I call the police. He took my phone and threw it out the window. And I'm like, where the hell are you taking me? Guys, this is when it gets really dangerous. Y'all let me know if I should make a part four. Okay, so this will be my first and last time addressing this. So, some people are very impatient about part ones and part twos and all of that. Y'all not realize that I have a life. Y'all know I'm not on TikTok 24-7. This is not, this is not my job. This is what I do for fun. Some of y'all ask, why would you wait an hour or two to post the next part? Because it took me an hour or two to make it. I don't be sitting here making videos from on my camera five hours a day. That's just not happening. I do realize this is not my life. This is just TikTok. And some of y'all complain about the recap. Either some people didn't watch the part before or they don't remember. That's why I have it like a 10 or 15 second reminder of what happened before. And if you don't like my videos, you could just unfollow. This is part two on how my boyfriend got my sister pregnant. So like I said earlier, my sister passed out and I took her to the hospital and come to find out she was pregnant. I was happy for her, of course, but she never told me she was seeing anyone. When we got back home, I asked her, so who the baby daddy? She jumps and she's just like, uh, some guy from school. I said, some guy got you pregnant? And I bust out laughing. She told me it wasn't funny. Then I asked, so who is he? 
She said, we don't talk no more, and ran into her room. I let it go, but I noticed something was weird. A couple weeks later, one night my boyfriend leaves our room to go to my sister's. I get up and I listen on to the conversation, and he's basically trying to convince her to get an abortion. So, I walk into the room, very upset, and I ask him, why is he trying to convince her to get an abortion? And I notice he's giving her a stack of money. Part three. This is part two of how my toxic boyfriend had got me jumped by his ex-girlfriend. So I get a random text message and I'm going back and forth with the number and it tells me that they had been with my boyfriend Marquand for three years. I'm like, hold up, who are you? And she told me her name was Janaya and she sent pictures of her and Marquand together. I was just so upset and I was like, wow. Then I text her, I didn't even know that she existed. Now I'm guessing that she took that to offense and she was like, what ho, you're a nobody. And me, I'm trying not to start with her, but she's literally disrespecting me for no reason. And we was going at it, but I had to ignore her. The next day, I pull up to Marquand and I ask him, who was that? He was like, that's my ex. I don't know how she got your number. Just stuttering. I could just tell he was lying. I couldn't believe him. So I took my things from his place and I was trying to leave out. He was like, oh, baby, don't leave. While I was on my way out, there were like five girls pulling up to his crib also. This is when I was about to get jumped. Part three of how my boyfriend got my sister pregnant. So I walked into my sister's room and my boyfriend is handing her a stack of money, telling her she should get an abortion. I start yelling, what are you doing? My boyfriend says he's just helping her out. I scream, why are you trying to have her get an abortion? Then my sister interrupts and says, we need to tell her. She looks at my boyfriend. I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? She tells my boyfriend, we got to tell her. I'm like, tell me what? My boyfriend says nothing. There's nothing to tell you. My sister just says straight up, the baby is his. I sit there for a second, and then out of nowhere, I just black out. I tagged him until my sister pulled me off. I went to our room. I packed up my things. I took my boyfriend's clothes, put them into a tub, poured bleach on them, grabbed my things, and left. A couple months later, my sister had the baby. It's now been two years, and I still haven't spoken to either my sister or my ex-boyfriend. This is part three of how my toxic boyfriend had got me jumped by his ex-girlfriend. If y'all remember, like I said earlier, there were five girls that pulled up to his house. As they were getting closer, I noticed that one of the girls was the same girl that was texting me and how she and Marquand was together for three years. I asked him, why is Janiah here? She gets real defensive, start yelling at me, cursing me out, calling me all types of names. Y'all, literally out of nowhere, Marquand turns into a completely different person. He tells Janiah, baby, I don't know why she came to my house. It's like she's stalking me. I'm like, what? You was just begging me not to leave. He's like, I don't know what she's talking about. And runs over to Janaya. And guys, my mind is blown. I start laughing like, wow, you're a joke. And I try to walk off. And Janaya is just like, what you say to my man, ho? I completely ignore her and continue to walk. And before I notice, I'm getting yanked by my hair and girls are stomping on me. It gets worse after this. Should I make a part four?